we are so thankful that you joined with us. Amen. We are so thankful for each and every one of you that are here at Influence Church. And for those that are joining with us all around the world, we just want to welcome you. We just want to say thank you for joining to our church this morning. On behalf of our senior pastors, Pastor Andrew and Clementina, we bring greetings and love to each and every one of you. Praise God. Amen. And we believe that today God is going to speak to us. Hallelujah. Amen. The Word of God says to us in the book of Psalms, chapter 90, verse 1, it says to us, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or you have ever formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Amen. God is always God to us. Amen. And so we are going to praise Him. We're going to worship Him. And we're going to glorify the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's worship Him. Father, we thank You, God, for who You are, God. We praise You. We honor You, God, that how wonderful and powerful Jesus You are to us, Lord. This morning we pray, God, that, that the name that is above every other name in this world is the name of Jesus, Lord. And we are here for that name. We are here to worship the name of Jesus in our life, God. And Father, we want to say thank you that how good you have been to us, how great you have been to us, how wonderful God you have been to us, Lord. Father, we want to say thank you that you are a God who does not even have a second thought about us, but God, your love is so immense to us. us. You have so much loved us. You have so much clothed us. You have graced us so much, God. Your favor that is upon our church and upon our people and those that are connected all over the world, God, we want to say thank you for bestowing your love towards us, God. How great and how wonderful Jesus you are to us as Lord. And we are so privileged, we are so honored, Lord. We are so humble to lift up that name of the Lord Jesus this morning, God. Father, help our worship team, God, as they come to lift up the name of Jesus, Lord. Father, we pray, God, the move of the Holy Spirit this morning, God. That, God, we cannot do anything without your presence. And, Lord, we pray that your presence leads us, Jesus. Lead us, God. And, Father, we believe there is a word coming from heaven this morning, God. And we believe that, Lord, that word is for us, Lord, that will bring changes amongst us, God. Lord, have your way in this, Lord, in this service, God. Have your way, Jesus, as you want to lead us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's worship Jesus. Hallelujah. Good and your mercy endure it forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure it forever. People from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah. Yes, 
Father, we honor and we worship. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. When all foundations have been shaken, when I'm left standing in the dark, and all I feel is my heart breaking. You still reign and you're still God And when it feels all hope is fading The heavy questions hit so hard And though my soul may feel forsaken You still reign and you're still God Though I can't see what's before me, I know that I can trust your heart. And this one truth will be my story. You still reign and you're still God. I will declare that you are with me. Those voices whisper that you're not. You'll never leave me nor forsake me. Cause you still reign and you're still God. Though I can't see what's before me, I know that I can trust your heart. That you still reign and you're still God. Though I can't see what's before me, I know that I can trust your heart. And this one truth will be my story. That 
Trust the victory on your cross and fix my eyes upon you, Jesus. For you are God and I am love. You are good and you are faithful. As you hail me from the Heavenly Father, you are still glory, Father. You're still one in the rain in our life. Holy is the Lamb, holy is the Lamb who was slain. The one who broke down the great wall of enmity and gave me his name. How gracious is my Redeemer, to Jesus, the Son of the Highest. And what good I constantly give to you but the fragrance of my hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Sing, holy is the man, holy is the man of sorrows. You showed him the works of the evil one all with your own mind and mercies before and behind is such beauty all around you and how could I ever repay you but with the fragrance of my hallelujah Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. 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 And we ascribe worth and give up 
Jesus, because you're worthy of it all, Father. Hallelujah. Oh, for from 
Father, we come before you this morning. Yes, Lord. Lord, we are empty. We need filling. Yes, Lord. We are nothing without you. Lord, we are silent. We are empty at your feet. Lord, you are the breath. You are the strength. You are a hope. You are a provision. You are a power. You are a will. And you are a future. There is nothing within us that is good but only you. It's your spirit that gives me life. It's your spirit that gives me wisdom. Everything that I have is yours. Nothing can I call it mine. Lord, we want to thank you, Lord, for that Ruach, that breath that you breathe on us, that Holy Spirit that lives within us. Once we were dead, but today we are alive because of that breath. Father, I just pray, Lord, the spirit of this world is competing against that spirit, but we know you are victorious. The one in this world is defeated, but the one within us is victorious. Lord, I pray this morning that anyone here who is struggling, I just pray that they will realize that your spirit, Lord, will speak to the, that spirit, to the person's spirit, and say that you are victorious. The one in the world is defeated, but the one within us is victorious. Thank you, Lord, for that, Remember, reminding us this morning. Lord, even as we look into your word, I just pray, Lord, that your wisdom, your leading, will be in our hearts and we'll take from today as we go home. We'll be renewed, new and focused and victorious. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. You are seated. Thank you. Good morning. And uh, as I said last time, uh, every time I come, it won't be a 20-minute sermon. Tough luck. Because uh, I, I, I'm used to longer sermons. Uh, so whenever I come, it will be a little longer. So bear with me. Um, last time I was here, I spoke on Psalms 37 verses 3 to 4. There is a problem in the church and everywhere in the church uh, world. That in the church and outside the church of people talking about each other. We commonly talk about this, say this is gossip. Because uh, gossip is a very, very, very interesting thing. And Proverbs was, uh, chapter 26, verses 20 to 22 says this. For the lack of wood, the fire goes out. But where there is no whisper, quarreling ceases. The charcoal to hot embers and wood to fire. So is a quarrelsome man for kindling strife. The word of a whisperer are like delicious morsels. They go down into the inner parts of the body. So gossip is a so, uh, it, it's an interesting thing. Everybody wants to listen. Have you heard about so and so? You get their ears. They will. Uh, they tentatively ask you. You, 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 you preach to them. You talk about the gospel. No, you talk about somebody else. You got their ears. You got their attention, yeah. right? Because that's so interesting. Because nobody else knows. Only you. I'm telling you only to you. So the whisperer, it, you know, they, they they have this attention. So this is exactly the opposite of what I spoke last time. In, in Psalm 37, chapter 37, verses 3 to 4. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. 
take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of the heart. So doing good and this is doing the ex extreme opposite of it. Why I wanted to talk about this? In a church, in a community, this is destruction. And God hates whisperers. God hates gossip. God hates judging each other. So doing good is an imperative. You have to do. There is no option. As a Christian, as a believer, you've got to do good. And that is why we have to speak about this. There are two sides of good, doing good. One is you are good because God is good. God has given you his righteousness within yourself, so you're good. That's one part of it. The other part is intentionally doing good. Because God has done good things in your life, you're intentional in doing good. Because you have to help people. You have to bless people. You have to intentionally do good things because God has done good things. In Sri Lanka, of course, the national tendency is to gossip. But I think in every country, it's the same. It's a different, it has a different color, different, different complexion. Gossip actually and talking to people behind their back destroys both the whisperer and the receiver. It's destruction of community because of this. So this has to be spoken about. So I'm going to use a lot of scripture, read a lot of scripture, and let that touch our hearts. Why it's so destructive? See, the book of James is what got me thinking about it. The book of James is generally considered to be a general episode. General episodes are like the books of the, the letters of Peter, the letters of uh, uh, James, the letters of Hebrews. They're kind of general speaking about Christian living. But nothing is general. If you write a letter to somebody, there is a reason for writing something. There is a reason. So when James is writing this, there is something very special in his back of his mind. He wants to address something. But he's talking about a lot of things. But this specific thing comes through throughout the book of James, the letter of James. Actually, I found about 12 to 15 verses that actually is addressing this particular thing that we are talking about today. Talking and judging people. Talking bad about people. Right? James 1.19 says, Know this, my beloved brothers. Let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. James 1.26 says, If anyone thinks he is a religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. If they don't control their tongue. James 3.2 is very important. For we all stumble in many ways. And if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he's a perfect man, able to bridle the whole body, able to bridle the whole body with the tongue. Bridle is like using a horse terminology. You put the bit in the mouth and control the horse. It's like controlling the horse with this little thing if you can't control your tongue. James 3.5. See, also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire. It's just a spark that makes the whole fire, uh, the, the jungle burn. James 3.12 Who is wise and understanding among you? By his good and conduct, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom. James 4, 11 to 12. Do not speak evil against one another, brothers. The one who speaks against a brother or judges his brother speaks evil against the law and judges the law. Very important. James is saying if you speak against your brother, you're judging the person which is against the law 
and you're breaking the law. You're judging the law, right? But if you judge the law, you're not a doer of the law, but a judge. But there is only one forgiver, lawgiver, and judge. He who is able to save and to destroy, but who are you to judge your neighbor? This is all in the book, the, the, the letter of James. James 5.9 says, Do not grumble against one another, brothers, so that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. This is not a simple thing. He says, if you're judging your brother, you are a breaker. Of, you're judging the law of God. Who are you to judge the law of God? He says, only one lawgiver. So this is the main message of the book of James. I, I, you could find another, another thing. But this theme comes on and on in the letter. Because he wants to tell people, hey, if you're a church, if you're a community, if you're in Christ, you have no business to judge another person. You have no business to judge my servant. Jesus is saying, my servant, I will judge. Okay? We are called to be different. You know the, the salmon, the fish. It, it lives in the sea. But when it's ready to lay eggs, to spawn, they actually go upstream the river. Actually, they lay eggs in fresh water, in fresh springs, up in mountains. That's where the salmon starts its life cycle. So they are, the, the eggs are hatched when they're big enough. They start coming downstream hundreds of kilometers to the sea. They live their life when they're ready to lay eggs. They actually retrace that same route that they came downstream. They go upstream to the very place that they were born. And they lay eggs and then they die. We are called to be like salmon. We Christians are people who go against the current of society. We are called to be totally opposite. Now, there are people who say, oh, no, no. But how can we reach people for Christ? What a noble thought. How can we reach people for Christ if we are not joining, not in the world? But remember, Christ also said, you got to be in the world, but not of the world. So we are in the world, but we don't go according to the stream of society. We actually go against it. While going against it, we, people see that we are different. And that's when God's testimony flows through us. Not when we go according to the stream. So when people tell bad things about us, we are actually blessed. Them. When people say things behind our back, we actually do good things to them. That's why we are like this, the, the salmon, you know, traveling against the current. Jesus was very, very clear about this. Listen to this. Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 to 5. Judge not that you be not judged. For with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye? But do not notice the log that is in your own eye. Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck of, out of your eye. When there is a big log in your own eye. You hypocrite. First take the log out of your own eye. And then you will see the clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. We are called, we cannot judge. Because we have sinfulness. We have problems in our own life. We cannot, we have no authority to judge. Because we are also sinners. 
we all also have problems. We very often try to cover up our problem by looking, talking about other people's problems. This is the biggest issue. When I see people actually making a big scene about little things in the church, I know there are big scenes in that person's life. They try to cover up by, you know, making a big scene about little things in the church. It's not only in church, even in the families. Like some one sibling will make a big scene about another sibling's issue. To see that sibling has a big issue in that person's life. So this 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 problem of of having this log in your eye is across society with everybody, right? So because we are sinners, we are because we are not perfect. We have no authority to judge. We cannot. And Jesus says, actually, John says in one one John one eight to ten. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. If we say we are walking in God's light, and say we have not sinned, we are deceiving. We are not truth. We are not saying the truth. We have no authority to judge. James four twelve says, "There is only one lawgiver and judge. He who is able to save and to destroy." But who are you to judge your neighbor? Basically, what I'm trying to say is, when we say bad things about another person, we are actually judging them, and we are saying, "God, I'm judging your law too. I have problems, but I'm going to look at other people's problems. Who are you to judge? We cannot look down on our brother." The word of God is so clear about it. I uh, let's 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 look at this. We'll talk about that later. Psalm one hundred one verse five says, "Whosoever slanders his neighbor secretly, I will destroy. Whoever has a haughty look and an arrogant heart, I will not endure." God says, "If you speak about a brother or sister in secret to another person, I will destroy that person." This is the word of God. You go read it. Read this. Psalm one hundred and one verse five. Matthew twenty twelve thirty six to thirty seven says. Jesus says, "I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give account of every careless word they speak. So if you speak about a brother, put the person down. God is going to ask ask you to give to give to give account of what you said. Something happens to that person." You are at fault. For your words, you will be justified, and by your words, you will be condemned. So, what you speak is very important, whether it's a blessing or a curse. It becomes a curse if you look down on your on your brother and put speak a bad against the person. Another another verse, and then we'll discuss this further. Proverbs verses uh, chapter six verses sixteen to nineteen. There are six things the Lord hates; seven that are an abomination to Him: haughty eyes, lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that make haste to run to evil, a false witness who breathes out lies. So, speaking about somebody to another person. God hates. That is established. That we saw in the Bible. Jesus says. The Old Testament says. The New Testament says. The Epistle says that we have no right to speak about another person's problem. Maybe that person is wrong. Maybe that person is in sin. But you don't judge. You have no right to judge. You have no right to say bad things about the person. You're called to do good. You're actually called to help the person. You are called. You are not actually. You don't have any authority to judge the person. So, what should our attitude be? What should our attitude be? What is the character of a righteous person? Philippians four eight says this. 
Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is, hon whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. I'm sure you look at people around here, you can find 150 things that are negative. Look at me and say, this guy is a fat. He is a pot. He comes from Sri Lanka. He doesn't speak good English. You can find out. How, there are many things that you can say. But most of us do emphasize on that things that we don't like. That are so-called negative. But Paul is saying in Philippians 4, 8, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, that's what you got to focus on. So when you see somebody, when you, are, when you feel somebody has hurt you, what's your response? To commend the person, to encourage the person, to honor the person, to provide for the person, do something good. If somebody hates you, spend your money, spend your wealth, spend your time, do something nice. It's not only for your parents, not for you. If you're doing it for your parents, for people who, who love you, you are no different to the world. They do the same. They, they care for who they, who, who others, they, who love them. But we are people like salmon who swim against the current. So when people hurt us, we bless them. When people speak bad of us, we actually speak good of you. When somebody comes and sings like a sister, at the end of it, you say, hey, sister, I was blessed. I was blessed. You sang so good. And I was blessed. I thank you for God uh, blessing you with that gift and talent. And I'm saying that. Thank you for, for bringing us to the presence of God. If somebody cooks something, say, it's marvelous. Thank you. I like it. I love it. If something you... Try to find some good to say to other people. Amen. If you do that, there is no problem. There is no issue. There is no issue at all. And this particular verse here uh, in chapter Philippians chapter 4, 8 that we read just now, it's in the background of, of two ladies who are fighting, Iodia and Sintiki, in, in the church of Philippi. They were, had issues. And Paul, while discussing that issue, says this. The problem in the churches and even in families anywhere is that we are judges. We judge other people and we speak bad about them. So <clears throat> this is what we are called to do. To honor, to lift up whatever is true, whatever is beautiful, whatever is good. Always speak about those things. And lift up people. A few other attitudes I will just uh, I will just grab, go through. 1 Peter 3 9 says, Do not repay evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, bless to, do, to those. Um, for this is why, why you were called, and you may obtain a blessing. If you if you need a blessing, you got to bless. Bless people even if they hurt you. It's human, humanly impossible. You would agree? Would you agree? Yeah. It's humanly impossible to bless people who hurt us. But the human way of things, you wait till I get a chance. I'll whack you. I'll destroy you. I'll put you down. That's human. If that comes up, don't worry about it. That is, that is the flesh. If it doesn't come, you're... Mentally retarded. If somebody hurts you, if you don't feel like re retaliating, that is, you have some problem with you. The thing is, as Christians, when that comes, you are reminded that you are not a person of the world. You are 
you have you 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 let god work in you you let his word work in you and you say no remember the two ways of doing good one is you are good because you're righteous because god's righteousness that is that's called imputed righteousness second is intentional good you do righteous acts intentionally so when you feel like retaliating you intentionally you plan you plan not to destroy you plan to build like god says in his word i don't plan to destroy i plan to build god is not a destroyer so when people hurt you when people say bad things about you if they do, even don't don't accept you you do good you actually intentionally plan and do good it is then that you have the right to be a testimony for christ until then you cannot be a testimony for christ until you do that so do th- something tangible so do something good something physical something nice intentionally plan and do something good let go of the hurt by blessing others especially when some people say bad things about you intentionally do some good things i've done this and i'll tell you it frees you and it challenges that challenges that person it frees you it takes the pressure out of you it takes the pain and hurt out of you and it challenges the other person to follow christ closely so by just intentionally doing good to those people who hurt you you're changing the whole environment you're changing the whole environment that person will never come and hurt you again by loving right by loving remember in psalm 37 verses 3 to 4 the last time i preached it said trust in the lord and do good you got to do good if you're a christian you're going to do good not only to the people who do good to you even to the people who hurt you right sometimes we like to hold on to the hurt the pain because then sometimes you feel if somebody for instance somebody hurt, hurts you say something bad about, about you you keep that in heart you harbor that and they say you know why because that makes you feel you're higher you're on the high horse you know like i really said wait till i get a chance or massacre you so you have this high horse attitude and i have something against you that i can use it ah, this illustration this guy jack was walking in his normal walk and one day while walking he so he he walks generally past this kind of a very deep ravine uh, like a precipice he never goes to look at it but he walks past it this day he wanted to just check around how deep it is so he went closer to look peep and he slipped and he fell while falling quite a big fall maybe hundreds of meters he grabs hold of a bush and now he's hanging for his life and he's screaming is there anyone up there please help me i'm 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 almost falling little boy he says he hears a voice saying um hey jack can you hear me jack says yeah 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 i can hear you i can hear you yeah i'm i'm falling down and then he jack says who are you who are you who are you i said i didn't the voice says i i am the lord i'm the lord i you mean you mean god lord yeah yeah that's it that's it i'm god i'm lord and that says oh please help me help me to uh, from this uh, if you if you do help me i'll stop sinning i, I i'll give my time to the church I, i will do all good things and the lord says hey hey hold on hold on don't promise too many things just let us get you down first right uh yes 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 please 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 and then he says the lord says um okay let go let go then i'll take care of it 
You mean to say let go? You mean to say let go of this 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 bush? And Jack thinks for a little while and starts screaming again. Is there anyone else up there to help me? He can't let go, but he, he wants to be saved. He can't let go too. This is a story. But that's what most of us are. Our lives in a, are in a mess. We, and we don't have joy. We don't have happiness because we hold on to that anger. We hold on to that grudge without letting go so that God can bring that peace into our life. So this is what our, our minds are. This is what God wants us to do. Let go. Let go. And how do you let go? By blessing the people who hurt you. See what Jesus says. But I say to you, who here? Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you in Luke chapter 6. Pray for those who abuse you. To one who strikes your cheek, offer the other two. And from one who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic and goes on and on. In verse 32, he says, if you love those who love you, what benefit is it for you? For even the sinners love those who love them. But love your enemies and do good. This is what Jesus said. This is not an Old Testament story. This is what Jesus says. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. I'm convinced. Listen to this. I'm absolutely convinced that our blessing depends on how much we bless others. Yeah. Our blessing depends. This is not only on financial blessings. I'll tell you, just because you give your tithes, it's not, don't expect blessings. God helps, wants you to love your neighbor. God wants you to love your enemy. God wants you to bless those who are, does, don't bless you so that you will be blessed. People do good. It's very simple. It's not complicated. Christianity is not complicated. We try to complicate it. We try to bring big theologies and try to complicate it. It is a very simple thing. You don't even have to come to church. I'll get massacred with, by Pastor Andrew. You don't even have to have come to church. If you only have this principle in your life. Follow God and do good to people in the name of Jesus. And people will come to know Jesus. We as a community are called to look after each other. Colossians 4, 6 says, Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer people. Seasoned with, be always gracious. Romans 12, 8, 18. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with everyone. I'll finish with this illustration. There was this gentleman who was talking about um, something that happened in when he was eight years old. The first time he saw grief and sorrow in his life. He, in the church, one day, uh, a gentleman died in his early 40s and the coffin casket was in the church the service was on people were sitting waiting for the service to start then this old frail gentleman gray-haired man comes very slowly to the coffin and starts to cry so much and he realized that that was this gentleman's father and he was sobbing nobody could console him crying his heart out he would have expected him to die first not his son his son is dead he can't can't fathom it can't hold on and he was crying so much then he saw this little boy saw people one by one getting up and coming around the coffin embracing, hugging him, 
being with him around. The whole church comes around the coffin. And then he sees the gentleman slowly but surely. The sound gets lesser, the crying gets lesser, the sobbing gets lesser, and it settles down and he stops crying. And this gentleman says it's at it's almost like his his grief, his pain was broken into little small pieces and shared among everybody in the congregation. And he concludes saying, that is what church has to be. We have to, we have to, we have to take each other's burdens, support each other. Church is for that. That's what church is. If you hear somebody suffering, they, this is the first church. We hear about the first church after Pentecost. Everybody kept the, the belongings. I mean, they shared it between each other. That's because the Holy Spirit was working in them. And that's what the Holy Spirit is. He wants us to, to share our burdens. That's why there is a church. A church is not to collect tithes. A church is not to come here and praise God in, in, with music. A church is not to have these tamashas. A church is not to have anything else. A church is a group of people that share. Because we are people who, who, who are traveling against the current of society. And it's not easy. It's not easy. Because Jesus called us and he said, In this world you will have persecution. You will have trials. How can one of us go through trials alone? We can't. That's why church is. It's like this gentleman's grief was teared and broken into little pieces and shared among the congregation and he felt accepted. He felt comfort within that group. God created Adam and Eve. They failed. Then God chose the man Abraham. He chose a family, Jacob and his sons. He chose a nation, Israel, to be the light of the world. But they failed too. He chose a man, then Jesus. Create a na created a nation through them. The new Israel or the church. To be the light of the world. And he put his own spirit in the church's heart. Within the church. Are we to fail too? How sad would that be if we failed again? With God's Spirit within us, what else can we do? But love each other, share each other's burdens, stop speaking about other person's negativities, lift each other, encourage each other, today and decide I will never speak ill of a brother or sister ever again. Can we decide that today? Can we take a decision today and say we will encourage, we will lift up, we will, we will support, we will say good and we will do good. We will intentionally do good to our brothers and sisters, not only here, wherever we are. Let's, live, let's stand to our feet and respond to God. Because what I learned was not my words. Today, you would have seen it's all scripture. It's all scripture. And now, you got to respond. Let us respond to it. Because His Spirit is within us. It's, his spirit is among us. And he's created this new Israel, the church. Let it start with us. Let us decide today. There's a lot of negativity. There's a lot of backbiting. There's a lot of backstabbing. There's a lot of destruction. There's a lot of gossip. Let us decide today 
that we will not engage in that let us decide that we will not be a part of it that we'll be like the salmon who swims against the current let us be christians who swim against the current of the world who want to glorify god not man yes sometimes traveling against the current is very difficult but as a group like that old man who was grieving let us come together if one struggles all of us struggle let us come together and encourage each other and travel against the current of society let's decide because jesus has decided already and gave put his spirit within us and he's cloaked us with his righteousness let us intentionally do righteous things by that glorifying the name of jesus father god we just come before you this morning in response to your word in response to your word lord help us to grow in your word that's the only way lord that we can we can obey you that's the only way that we can fill our life that's the only way that we can strengthen ourselves father help us grow help us grow deeper in you and father help us intentionally do things so that your name will be lifted up we commit our lives in the, into your hands this morning thank you for your word speak to us throughout this week and help us lord to come back and testify about your goodness what you've done in our lives and through us and in us in jesus name we pray